are in the middle of a three-week examination of Sabbath. Sabbath is one of those spiritual disciplines that society doesn't really recognize as a discipline anymore. But it, it really is a spiritual discipline and one that we need to practice. One that renews our soul and, and helps us in our journey of faith. And perhaps now more than ever, Sabbath is needed in our rat race of a world. Now, we all need that season of Sabbath. And in our scripture reading for today, we look at, at seasons. Our life is defined by seasons. Right now, we are in the season between back to school and football. And I know some of you are, are very much ready for the season of football to begin. Just two more weeks, so hold on. Uh, some of you might be in season of joy. Some of you could be in a season of sadness, a season of struggle. Some of you are in a season of calm, or others of you in a season of chaos. Many of these seasons we are unexpected and we didn't realize they were coming and for some of us these are seasons that we brought on upon ourselves. Life is defined by seasons and that's what Solomon is speaking to in our scripture reading for this morning. He talks about different seasons in our lives. There is a time for love, a time for hate, peace, war, planting, harvesting, all of these different seasons. And while it is not explicitly said, the season of Sabbath is there. We need balance in our lives. In all of our toil and work, we also need a season of resting in God. So let's look at that scripture by turning to the book of Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verses 1 through 13. Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 13, I invite you to stand for the reading of God's word if you are able for everything there is a season, and a time for every manner under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill, and a time to heal. A time to break down, and a time to build up. A time to weep, and a time to laugh. A time to mourn, and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to, a time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds. Yet they cannot find out what God has done from beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift that all should eat and drink and take pleasure in their toil. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. There is a time for every season under the sun. And we catch a glimpse of this as Solomon lists off the various seasons. And after he gives this list of, of seasons, he says, what good is, is man's toil? Man should stop from their striving, stop from their doing, and enjoy rest in the Lord. Enjoy their works and enjoy the works of their creator. For man can't know all and be all and do all. There comes a season to rest in our busy lives. However, it can be very hard to find that season of rest. We want to do our part. We want to work. We want to strive. It can seem very self-indulgent to step back and let God be God. You know, it can seem very self-indulgent not to do all the time. 
After all, I stand up here Sunday after Sunday and tell you, you need to be doing more. You need to be striving more. You need to work here and there in the church. But with that working comes a balance to our lives. Not only do we need to give, we need to receive. We need to be recharged in the Lord. We need to find Sabbath for ourselves. There is balance in our lives. And as I say this, I think about the story of Mary and Martha that comes to us from the 10th chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Now, if you remember that story, Jesus has gone to the home of Mary and Martha, and Martha is in the kitchen making sure everything is just right for Jesus' visit. And Mary sneaks out of the kitchen, and she's sitting at Jesus' feet. Of course, this infuriates her sister Martha. And she says, Jesus... Rebuke my sister. Tell her she needs to get back in the kitchen with me. And Jesus says, Martha, Mary has chosen the better part. Of course, uh, Martha doesn't understand, and, and they don't see what we know in reading the gospel. Jesus is headed to the cross. There will always be work in the kitchen, but the time to sit at Jesus' feet is very limited. That is the place to be. That is where Mary needs to be and where Martha should be in that moment. There is balance to our lives. We need that time to sit at Jesus' feet to balance that time of work in the kitchen. And, of course, I have a hard time with that scripture because I'm a Martha. I want to be working in the kitchen, and I want everyone working alongside of me. We have these seasons in our lives where... We need to be in different places, and we need to discern when Sabbath needs to come. So I guess at this point it might help us to explore what Sabbath really means. Now, Sabbath is from the Jewish word Shabbat, and we looked at last week its um, roots in, in the Ten Commandments. Of course, it came, God modeled Sabbath in creation. He rested on the seventh day. And he gave the command of the Ten Commandments that thou shalt shall observe Sabbath. You should keep Sabbath. You and your household, everyone shall not work. You have six days to get it done. Keep Sabbath. And if you look at the definition of Sabbath, Sabbath is the law observed by Jews and some Christians from sundown on Friday to sundown on Saturday. It is a specific set time in the week, a calendar. And I saw this up close when I went to Israel last year. We were touring Caesarea Philippi, and it was getting sundown, near sundown on Friday, and we had to quickly end our tour because the park was about to shut down and everything was about to shut down, so we needed to get to the hotel. And when we arrived at the hotel, there was one elevator, which was an orthodox elevator. And it stopped at every floor so the Orthodox Jews would not have to push a button to do work to get off the floor where they needed to go. Now, that is a bit legalistic, and that's not what I'm talking about, the legalism of Sabbath. I'm talking about the joy of Sabbath, that spiritual discipline that we have in our lives where we make room to be renewed in God. Because just... Kind of think of it like your cell phones. Your cell phones do, but there comes a time when our cell phones need to be charged. In order to have the energy to work, they need to be recharged. And so it is with us. We need that time of recharging, of being poured into. As I said earlier, in order to give, we must receive. As Christians, it's not so much about a marked period of time on our calendar, but it is how we live day to day. It is finding holy time and holiness in our living each week. It's stepping back and resting in God, marveling in his great works, taking time just to soak in his word and, and be with him, to sit at his feet just like Mary did to remember that we're not defined by what we do and how we toil away and what we accomplish. We are ultimately defined as children of the living God in Jesus Christ. We are defined in our relationship with Jesus. We need that reminder from time to time in our lives. So, 
While this season is about rest, it is also that reminder for us. We need Sabbath so that we might remember. We first and foremost need to remember that we're not God and that we can pause from our pursuit of more. Walter Brueggemann, in his book, Sabbath as Resistance, writes that Sabbath reminds us that we don't have to buy into the world of coercion and commercialism and consumption, that we really don't have to do more, sell more, control more, know more, have your kids in more activities, be younger, be more beautiful, or score more. He goes on to write that we don't have to do that. God loves us where we are. God doesn't love us because of our more. He loves us because we are his children. Which is another point. Sabbath reminds us that we are saved by grace. It's not our more that saves us. It is God's grace, our faith in Jesus Christ. We are all products of the Protestant Reformation. And in that, there's that individual I. We don't need a meator. It's about I. And we are product, uh, products of a Puritan work ethic in this country. We work hard. We can do it all by ourselves. And uh, for those of you who grew up in the Methodist Church, we're products of this idea of moving on to perfection, sanctification. We're being made perfect in love in this lifetime. And your preacher stands up in the pulpits and talks about what you need to be doing. And with that, we feel guilty. We want to do more and accomplish more. We want to earn our way into heaven and please God with our, er our earning and our striving and our toiling. And ultimately, though, it's not these works which earn our way into heaven. It is grace. It is Jesus Christ who makes a way for us to heaven. We don't have to do more to be loved by God. God loves us as we are. We just have to receive that love in our lives. And that's an important message for all of us to remember. We must not forget what saves us. God saves us, and we do not save ourselves. We also need Sabbath as an exercise to trust in God. Now, we say, I trust you, God. I fully trust you. But if you're like me, we trust God, and we're working on the backup plan. We're doing our part just in case God's timing and work is not the way we want it. We trust God, but we don't hand it over to God like we should. We want to work in the background and get things done just in case God needs a little help to, to fix it the way we would like it to be fixed. Next week, we're going to look at a particular scripture from the Sermon on the Mount when God talks about uh, not to worry and serving two masters and in that, I mean, where Jesus talks about not worrying and serving two masters, and in that, Jesus points out the example of the birds of the air and the lilies of the field and how God provides for them. You know, if God provides for his creation in such a way, can't we trust God to provide for us? Can't we trust God to be for us and to take care of us? Sabbath reminds us that we don't have to do any tool. We can trust God for our needs, and God provides again and again. Now, at this point, you're likely saying to yourself, I really like the Sabbath concept. I can sleep in next Sunday. I don't have to study my Bible. I don't have to mow the yard again. I don't have to keep a clean house, and I can lay on my couch and eat Doritos. Well, that is not what I'm preaching here. Sabbath does not equal lazy. In the Bible, it does say, if you don't work, you don't eat. But with this, this isn't so much about self-centeredness as it is God-centeredness. And that's what makes Sabbath, Sabbath. It's not about focusing on the I and what we do and how we do. Rather, it's focusing on God and receiving that gift from God, resting in God, so we can grow deeper in his love and grace. Receiving the gift from God and finding the Lordship in Christ once again. Because we practice Sabbath anytime we say, I can let the world go away and I have time to go and worship. 
or I have time to study my Bible. I have time to savor that cup of coffee God has given me and just spend quiet time with God. I have time to take that nap because I need rest and God can handle this for a while. I have time to meet with fellow Christians and pray for them. I have time to stop and marvel at God's creation. I have time to find God in my hobby that I'm practicing or I have time to find God in some of you fishing or gardening. I don't understand that, but wherever you meet God, you have time to put it aside and find God and find the grace and love that he has for you. It's a time to recharge and be renewed and realize you don't have to do it all and accomplish it all. You can simply be with the Lord. Because let's face it, we need that time to be with the Lord, to leave the world aside and rest in Christ. Because the world has enough of us. The world has us most of the time. For many, much of us, we're either at work or we're at school. We're buying groceries. We're paying bills. We're doing housework. We're dealing with the stuff of the world. And if you don't believe me, just look at the news last week. The world can suck the life out of you. And um, it seems like things are going from bad to worse. And if we let the world have us all the time, then the world will suck the Jesus right out of us. And we need to be filled with Jesus. We need that grounding so we can be a witness for Christ in this world. We need that grounding, that rest and renewal, so we can be a voice of love and compassion and grace and give witness to the greatest love this world has ever known. We need that renewal and recharging in each of our lives, and that's why Sabbath is so very important. We need that balance. We need the balance between world and God. We're Christians all the time, and we need to remember that and find the charm to be recharged and renewed. God is there for us in all the seasons of our lives, in our doing and our resting, in our being and our accomplishing. We shouldn't let the world have us all the time, but we should remember to take that time and be like Mary, to sit at the feet of Christ so that we might be prepared for the work that God does have for us to do. We need that season of Sabbath in order to love God fully and be prepared to love our neighbors as ourselves. Shalom. Amen. Let us pray.